Roto. Sci-fi shows might have die-hard fan bases, but they often struggle with raw viewership. Take Almost Human. It had cool tech, great action, but by the end of its first season, the show was only pulling in about 6 million viewers per episode. Not bad, but compare that to non-sci-fi hits like NCIS or Law & Order, shows that consistently draw in over 12 million viewers every week. These kinds of numbers keep networks happy and shows alive. Even cult classics like Firefly suffered the same fate. Sure, it had a dedicated following, but when it came to general ratings, it just didn't stack up to broader appeal shows. Sci-fi can feel niche because the people who love it really love it, but that doesn't always translate to millions of viewers tuning in every week. But is it just the numbers that make sci-fi shows harder to keep alive? Or could it be something deeper, like how much these epic universes cost to create? Sci-fi is expensive. You've got special effects, futuristic settings, and sometimes even fully CGI characters. The cost to pull that off can be way higher than, say, a comedy or drama. Let's look at a non-sci-fi show like The Big Bang Theory. A few sets, some actor salaries, and bam, you've got a hit. But with sci-fi, even with solid ratings, the budgets can sink a show. While dramas and comedies can shoot in simple locations and focus on dialogue, sci-fi needs elaborate sets and effects. And the higher the cost, the more risk a network takes. So when a sci-fi show isn't bringing in huge ratings, it gets harder to justify those high production expenses. So why don't networks stick it out longer? Maybe it's not just about cost. It's also about whether the show fits the network's overall plan. Sometimes the timing just isn't right or the network isn't the best fit. Let's take a look at Firefly again. It aired on Fox, but Fox wasn't exactly known for cultivating space westerns at the time. Fridays? Forget it. Everyone was out and the show couldn't gain traction in a bad time slot. Even when a sci-fi show is doing okay, if it doesn't fit the new direction of a network, it's out. Think about how many networks and platforms have pivoted to different types of content. While shows like The OA and Sense8 were critically acclaimed, they were axed as networks focused more on reality TV, crime dramas, or anything that could pull in larger and more diverse audiences. Reality TV, with its low production costs and universal appeal, often gets the green light while sci-fi takes a back seat. Compare sci-fi to something like Love is Blind, a reality show that requires almost no special effects, no fancy sets, and has mass appeal. It's cheaper, easier, and guarantees a steady stream of viewers. So even when a sci-fi performs decently, networks sometimes just prioritize what's trending. So with the rise of streaming, you'd think sci-fi could carve out a solid place, right? Well, why isn't that happening? The goal for streaming platforms isn't just ratings anymore. It's all about gaining subscribers. Shows like Stranger Things can bring in a broad audience and keep subscribers hooked. But niche sci-fi shows? They may not draw in new users or keep current subscribers locked in. Platforms are looking for series that either bring in fresh subscribers or keep existing ones binging. Sci-fi, with its smaller, more dedicated followings, doesn't always meet that goal. This brings us to peak streaming. With so much content available at once, people binge watch and then quickly move on. If a sci-fi show doesn't have that gotta watch right now appeal, it's labeled a slow performer and gets the boot. The reason unique sci-fi shows keep getting canceled is not just because of one thing. It's a mix of low viewership numbers, high production costs, network shifting priorities, and the tough world of streaming. Over the past three decades, many sci-fi shows have been canceled prematurely. In this video, we'll cover 50 sci-fi shows that deserve a second chance.